Are you struggling with hair loss and do you not know where to start and stop your research? I remember how complicated dealing with hair loss was and finding a solution back in the days. This is why I've created this series that will take you through the ABC of hair loss so you know all there is to know about the fundamentals so you can start your fight against hair loss after seeing this video series. What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. This video is the first in a series of videos that will cover all you need to know about hair loss and how to deal with it. In this series we'll go over the following subjects. Video 1. This video. Why do we lose hair? So this video will explain why we are losing hair based on science and studies and give you the fundamental understanding of androgenic alopecia. Video 2. How do we combat DHC? This video will explain how we can combat the problem child of our hair named DHT. Video 3. Growth stimulants. How do we grow new hair? Well, topic kind of speaks for itself. Video 4. Inflammation and how to reduce it. After this video, you will know why inflammation is a bad thing. So this is clearly one of the reasons why this is a topic. And last we have video 5, different approaches to dealing with the problem. In that video we will take a look at how you can combine the knowledge you have gained from all the other videos you just saw in a protocol that just might be right for your daily needs and wants. Before we start the video, I would like to explain that this is still a work in progress. So I might add to the topics and I might change the titles of the videos, but the overall topic will still be the same. I would also like to add that I might have missed some interesting topics or there might just be something that I don't know that I should know about. So if you got any inputs or comments to the overall topics that I just described before and showed on the screen, please feel free to comment in the comment section below and I will definitely take a look at it. The whole plan with creating these videos is that people will have a series that explain the basics of all popular topics when we are talking about hair loss. And if people watch this series, I hope to answer all generic questions and also give the audience all the necessary knowledge to go out and gather knowledge on their own from now on. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Philippe and I suffer from hair loss too. And these videos are just my contribution to the hair loss community so that others might find value and benefits from my experiences and my experience when they take on the fight against hair loss themselves. As the plan states, today we are going to talk about why do men or why do we lose hair? Male pattern balding, also known as androgenic alopecia, is one of the most common reasons that men lose hair as they get older. I want to state that women can also experience this type of hair loss, but it is much less common. About 30 million women in the United States have this type of hair loss compared to almost 60 million men. So the demographic clearly shows why it's called male pattern baldness when we talk about androgenic alopecia. Sex hormones in the body are believed to be the most significant underlying factor behind male pattern baldness. And the major culprit is a name you probably already have been introduced to in your fight against hair loss or your search for a cure. This bad boy is named DHT and it is short for dihydrotestosterone. DHT or dihydrotestosterone is an androgen. An androgen is a sex hormone that contributes to the development what is thought as as male sex characteristics such as body hair, body odor, but it can also make you lose your hair faster and earlier. But before we talk about hair loss that is caused by DHC, I thought it was a cornerstone of how to deal with hair loss to be able to understand why DHT is in our bodies in the first place. So why do we have DHT in the first place? Well, DHT is what's called an androgen hormone. This means that basically when you grow up and you hit puberty, you will start to produce a lot of what's called the 5-AR enzyme. This enzyme takes a little part of your internal testosterone and convert it into another hormone called dihydrotestosterone. The reason for this is that DHT or dihydrotestosterone is about five times as strong as testosterone 
in producing male characteristics. It is these characteristics that will make something like, well, your penis will grow for them and your beard will start growing. Your voice will deepen and you'll start to produce chest hair and so on and so on. The production of DHC is also responsible for correcting how long or how tall you will grow. This is also why steroids is a really bad idea in an early age since it will mess up this procedure for sure in your body. So DHC is a very important hormone that is created from testosterone by the enzyme 5-alpha reductase enzyme. So how does this work? Have you ever had a friend who couldn't drink milk without camping at the toilet for the next five hours? Well, this friend probably lacked the other enzyme called lactase enzyme. This enzyme will reduce lactose into simple sugars and basically it is because our body doesn't want lactose, it wants sugars. And lactase will modify the milk sugars, which are called lactose, into something that are way more compatible with our bodies. This is also why when you don't have the enzyme, you can take a pill that is full of that specific enzyme and it will make sure you can drink a glass of milk without gassing your neighbors for the rest of the day. So we take the 5-AR enzyme, we add it to our hormone testosterone and we get DHC. And as I just said, DHC is responsible for a lot of good things when we are in our teens. But what is DHC's job after our teenage years? Well, I'm really sorry to tell you this guys, but this is taken directly from the National Institutes of Health. And it says DHC does not play a significant role in the normal physiology of adults. The most notable effects are prostate enlargement and male pattern hair loss as they age. And I would like to agree to a large extent. This is also a good opportunity to share some information with you guys. I do have videos on DHT and the importance of it. Actually, I have a lot of videos to be fair, but I would also like to encourage you guys to visit a YouTuber named Kevin Mann's channel. The channel's name is Hair Cafe. I want to make this very clear. I do not know Kevin and I'm pretty sure he doesn't know about me. And I surely do not agree with all his statements. But Kevin has a very interesting view on DHT. And even though I don't agree with all he has to say, I would like you guys to go and check out his channel and learn more about DHT from someone who is not me. That way you guys will get a much broader perspective on the whole subject about DHC. So we know that DHC is produced by the enzyme 5-alpha reductase enzyme converting testosterone into a stronger version dihydrotestosterone. And we know that DHT is not needed for anything beside prostate function and hair loss apparently. So what does it actually do that makes us lose our hair from DHC? I made a little drawing ready for you guys here just to explain the basics of it. So DHC is causing something called follicle miniaturization in our scalp. Basically, this is shrinking of the follicles. And if you don't know, the follicle is where the hair lives, where it grows, to keep it fairly simple. So what happens is that DHC, for some reason we don't know yet, will cause follicles on the scalp. And mind you, this is only on the top part to shrink. Simply, it will work as if you cut off the blood supply to your arm with a rope. First, it will lose blood circulation. It gets inflamed and slowly shrinks to a stage where it actually at some point will just fall off on its own. Your hair have a process that is much similar to this. What we usually see is an increased amount of inflammation that is caused by the DHT. And some believe that the inflammation is the root key to hair loss and other people think that it is just a byproduct of hair loss. Either way, we will have a focus on this in this video series. As time progresses, you will experience an increased itchiness in your scalp. This is the famous DHT itch. And your hair will begin to get thinner and thinner until it just completely stops growing or falls off. Although keep in mind, the DHT itch is a very popular term for the whole hair loss community. But what I actually believe is happening is an increased amount of microorganisms are living in your head, which is causing the inflammation and itchiness. You see, when you get inflammation in your scalp, it will increase your sebum production. 
This then gives great living space for these little monsters that then will increase your scalp inflammation and it is a vicious cycle of death in your scalp. But don't worry, we will cover this topic in this series to a solid extent. And this is basically how you lose your hair when you suffer from androgenic alopecia. To sum it up, DHC is produced by the enzyme 5-alpha reductase enzyme converting testosterone into a much stronger version, dihydrotestosterone. DHT is about three to five times as androgen as testosterone is in the first place. Remember, androgen activity is what is causing the hair loss. DHT is not needed for anything besides enlargement of the prostate and hair loss apparently. Constant exposure to DHT will lead to inflammation, increased number of microorganisms living in your scalp, and then increase your hair loss and cause hair loss in the first place. This concludes the first video in the series. I don't, I haven't found a name for it yet. So if you got a good suggestion, please, you're welcome. In the next video, we will cover the topic, how to fight DHC. Keep in mind the topic name might change, but the content won't. And you can always watch the playlist for the series that I've created. If you are getting lost in the whole order of videos. I want to acknowledge that there are tons of other approaches and theories about hair loss. But this is by my knowledge the only accepted globally theory for male pattern baldness. Even though, don't let this hold you back from investigating other approaches or theories. If you have any comments to this video or you have wishes or suggestions for the next couple of topics, feel free to leave a post down below so I can cover all the topics you guys have questions for. I hope this covers this topic and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.